so far, the Louis has been very successful in the hands of Roundall. 0-1 on the Jawhead. It's been a bit more 50-50. I think the Jawhead in general has been a bit more 50-50. Not really the most reliable of picks. Yeah. But if you do get that early game, you are an absolute menace. Yeah. Again, that early pressure from the Jawhead is something that you have to respect. Because you talked about it, uh, Arashi in a 1v1 straight up, and roamers against roamer. You know, the smart missiles does a lot of damage, especially after it is buffed. And now, of course, Moskov can be picked up in the hands of what? Um, staple pick for him. Good flexibility and uh, more options to go for a split push play if this diversion gets used effectively by all Trigo. There's a way for Dewa to kind of deal with the minion waves and the setups from Alter Ego. But again, with the Jawhead, I'm assuming some kind of tankier XP lead already selected. And so far, the Edith has been banned away by Alter Ego. And we know that Nino, he wants something that's a bit more aggressive as well. No Fovius, no Edith available, no Hylas too. Kind of weird, but the Terizla is still very much open. And for Dewa, trying to shut down most of the gold lane possibilities right here to ensure that Watt can get in control and actually carry from the gold lane. Roger taken out. You would argue that he's the most stable gold laner, the most stable uh, of picks. But let's take a look at the fun fact in MPL. Myanmar, Season 7. Fovius has 100% ban and pick rate with 7 times picked and 2 times banned. So, of course, in other regions, the Fovius has been respected, and now it, it has also have been catching up into Indonesia, you know. We have finally been yeah. able to ratify the effects and, the, you know, the, the magnitude of this Fovius. And I think now for Dewa, it will be a good position to go for an Arla pick, actually. You know, they already have the Ruby, they can go for the Arla here, they can use that flex, and they can take it away from Alter Ego. They can utilize it, but oh, they go for the Julian instead to so go up against the Fanny. Unfortunately, you won't get to see the Ling Fanny, just like yesterday. It was banned out by Dewa. It was pretty sad after seeing it yesterday on Kyrie and Super Ken, but it's not every day we get to see the both teams, you know, that confident, leaving both these heroes open. Still gonna be a different situation for sure. For Dewa, though, that main frontline still isn't really seen just yet, and especially against a Lo Yi and a Jawhead, I guess the frontliner becomes that much more important to kind of hide towards the end. It's Arla a weird play for sure, but I guess they're just relying more on that flex potential of the Ruby. Altrigo though, with the final two picks, grab the Harith very late, and they take the Arlet that could be well used by Dewa away from them. Yeah, the Harith was left open for the entire time exactly. in the drafting phase, so of course, pretty late from Ultra Ego, but it still is going to be a lane bully, at least for Moskov in the hands of what? You know, you have more mobility and you can fight back. You can really show off the wave, go waves with your passive. So it kind of helps as well against this Herod who also wants to show off the wave and bully you in lane. And now for Kaze, rather for Dewa, United in the last pick. Still flexible in the Ruby, so either they pick up a Roamer or an XP laner. Yeah, that's why I really thought they should have just gone for Arlet first. It was, you can see from a mile away that Arlet pick for Ultra Ego. With the Herod too, now they have a complete composition that can get so much synergies with the Lo Yi too, the Arlet. So Dewa really... Oh, they have, have to go for the Barats now. And disengage with the Deconos Welcome, but he's prone to getting forced to use that, especially if Alter Ego, you know, maybe threaten just slightly using a, a, fi a final slash or an ejector attempt. So it has to be, Sorizo has to be very wise with when he chooses to expend the Deconos Welcome. Here we go, into the last match of the day and of the week. It is the Chaotic Boys Five against the Gods. The Will Alter Ego be able to pick up yet another win after their string of losses? Or will the Gods punish them? It is Alter Ego against Dewa United Esports. Chaos. Will Alter Ego be able to bring more chaos than Dewa United? It is a chaotic battle in the Land of Dawn. It's not the Chaos Derby, but it is still gonna be full of action for sure. You can see for both junglers, it's about that fast clear, and with the Jawhead assisting, seems like Nile will have a bit more of an advantage. We'll see what they do with that though. Usually we see jungles go for a quick litho attempt, or they can go straight into the jungle of their opponents and steal away a camp it's very, very sneakily, kind of get an advantage that way. Ooh, Nile sliding forward towards the litho. And the M's though by Indy Home. Firmness and tenacity for even what on the gold uh, on the Moscow wow. in the gold lane completely respecting potential yeah. and for Sorizo he has the tenacity as well 
considering he's tankier, he's going to be getting a lot more value from it. Inspire in the hands of highs means that there's going to be spammable spells coming in, sync coefficients and dashes. Yeah. I think that's about it when it comes to those interesting game-changing emblems. Um, the Moskov needs to survive this lane against the Hearth. The tenacity will most likely help it. But now the question has been this Barat's backup, aside from just surviving the lane against Arlet, do you see the Detona's welcome as a tool to counter the Fanny? To counter the Fanny, I mean, if you can land it on the Fanny, it becomes a great tool. We saw... Oh, hang on a minute. Whoa! With the cutthroat Nile clean. Waiting for Heist to paint the Spear of Misery, and it was a free kill, even with the firmness and tenacity. It doesn't matter. Man, the Fanny immediately online. Nile has always lethal on it. Now for Sorizo, again, realize can he go and land the Daytona's welcome on this mobile Fanny? Because Nile doesn't stay still. We've seen Lings fall victim to that, but it depends on the situation. Uh, Walking up, getting Dora walking on a three. Nino so coming down. Roundel getting the kill as well. Now, oh, Fanny munched down. Oh, for no. Ray winning the retribution. Owen toning them away. So Rizzo able to dish out some damage. But again, Roundel getting those vacuums. Nino escaping from Ray. It becomes a one for one, a kill for a turtle. I just said that it's going to be unlikely for services to land it on the Fanny. And he did. They cast a curse as proficient as ever. For Dewa though, they're seeing that there's so much potential for Alter Ego to win out in these fights. Dewa can kind of hold, they kind of sustain. When it comes down to it, they have drafted something more of a front to back. And they require items, they require scalings, because the Loi inherit in the early game, the Fanny as well. All these early game base damage tools are available for Alter Ego to completely dominate. And here we go, talent predictions by the new application GoPay. We have... Only Ranger Amas with the Ultra Ego, but there we go with the Unstoppable Force. Ooh. Oh, the Cutthroat Nile! Clean on the cables! So clean. He's able to just get a single Ooh, clean. burst, and Mueza evaporates. Keys, man. He tried to really save his teammate there by using the Terrify book into the Valentina's kit, but that was just a bit too risky, especially when Nile is around. You want to have that gap closed, that outplay potential available in case he shows out. This is a lot of pressure exerted by the Fanny, not even by being in lane. When the Fanny isn't visible, it's almost like Dewa needs to save some of their spells just in case he shows up. Mm -hmm. Of course. Oh, in case. Pun fully intended. Ah, that's, that's a good discovery <laughs> over there. But oh, and with the ejector. Oh, get Cerezo. Flicker, and then the spit out oh. into the kill. A questionable engage there without Nile walking forward. Nino not able to get the vengeance, but finally does. That's a kill traded in. Now the, the chain, together with the enhanced sight and Kays with a splash of damage. Then we're united online. Oh, Interesting Heist. situation for the EXP lane right here. Both of them to have such an all in kit. Look at oh. Heist though. The steal on the diversion. Heist, where are you gonna go? Mueza doesn't even need to go for the I'm offended. Oh, what? Oh. How? No! A misplay from Dewa, but Heist is saying. And he will get punished for it in the end range. Oh. Retribution winning it out, but now getting caught against three, no, four of Alter Ego's members. Heist, almost the escape artist for Alter Ego, but he gets taken down anyways. And all hell breaks loose. Dewa united to get the turtle, but still, they lost highs in that process. They lost highs, but for the most part, Dewa were able to actually get a lot of value from that play. The gold plating on the turrets, not only touched too far. Dewa really could have saved a lot of time and has spent more time taking gold from Alter Ego there. But look at Owen, already aggressively looking for something. Again, without the main frontline available, it's gonna be too dangerous. The Nile, man. A lot of damage, and Sorizo just stands there menacingly as Owen gets caught. Oh no, Owen. Flickering out, Mueza oh. is offended, but Owen doesn't care. So much fleet footwork coming in. It was highs back then, and now it was Owen. He's able to dodge all the initiations coming in towards him. Now Ultra Ego, of course, if you take a look at the audience prediction, 70% off those uh, fans here voting for Ultra Ego. The people literally have spoken voting for Ultra Ego. We'll see if the gods can crush down the will of them. But look at, look at this! Oh no, oh, they still wow. get the teleport. That, that was a flicker burned by Mueza. Oh no! If you pulled one of them out of the diversion, that would have been such a good play. 
But for Dewa, unfortunately, they won't be able to get anything more from that Diversion Punish. Although, that's a cooldown used up by Alter Ego, so for a while, we won't see any big teleports. Yeah, and now, of course, you talked about how they picked up the Moskov to kind of match that global presence from the Diversion by the Luo Yi. The hands of Roundel, of course, but you kind of forget that Case also has the access to the Diversion with the Valentina IMU as well, so I think global presence in the side lanes, or maybe if you want to go for ganks, it's also very possible for Dewa United Ooh. to make. You no, know, what? Down bottom. And look at the other side of the map, Sorizo, going with a very, very deep cut. Now rotating to the mid lane. That's a great play. Now we can just rotate straight to the turtle. It's a bit of a fundamental style there. Just push the wave, cut it, and then go. Alter Ego might lose a tur uh, turret because of that. And now Dewa can pull the trigger on this turtle take. Let's see, Owen. Open it up, Weza. We found out. Southern Force coming down with the ejector as well. Onto Weza. Nile go back and forth. Donnie with the Ibofen and again, it's cut through down. Now it's a top down over. It's still going to oh. be Ray who finds the retribution somehow. It's a one for one, but retribution has proved to be deadly. Lethal. Strike three for Ray. He gets the retribution again and again. Diversion play again. Ooh. All right. Let me say, it won't. Be fruitful for all three go. Both teams now just treating roamers to get, try and go for a contest on the turtle. I'm wondering now with the Lord coming up being a bit more important, are any of these teams gonna go and try to go for the kill instead of, of the objective? But we've seen both of them go fit for the 50-50s again and again. Uh -oh. Maybe going for a wipeout is the way to go. Boys, uh, into the bottom limit, we can see Owen going to be there. Diversion already bringing Rondo and Nino. What? It is gonna be one. Oh, caught up Nile. Getting the kill as the final slash reveals Mueza, but that's it. It's gonna be a great rotation from Dewa, but it's matched by the diversion. It's a reactive diversion, if you will, for all Torigo. A fresh way to use it, and they've successfully stopped the Dewa's aggression, but they are still behind in gold. If you look at the items, Heptasis and BOD for Nile, he's definitely a real threat for anyone that's squishy on the side of Dewa. Or what though? Not even the two item power spike at eight minutes. He is quite significantly behind. Oh, Nile just cabling his way front to back and Dewa United. Sure, they have been able to address this Fanny at least with the the Tonos welcome from Cerizo. But mm -hmm. I don't think that is going to be uh, you know, an opportunity where, where he can really chop when the Fanny is cabling. But now of course diversion play. What? Thankfully he's still behind the tower, so he's gonna be relatively safe. Oh, rotation comes through for Dewa. Gonna defend. And seeing that, Alter Ego will back away. It's a bit too visible. They're going for these diversion plays in the middle exactly. of the map, <laughs> in the rivers, right? Usually you have to be a bit more crafty, discreet, a bit more discreet with your location selection. So Alter Ego will not be able to get that play before the Lord. Once again, it's a 50-50. Is Alter Ego or Dewa finally gonna go straight for the Lord or oh. go for some kind of pickup? Whoa! Oh. Only on to Moesa. I don't think that's a good engagement, but it's still Moesa very, very low. I'm offended! Bringing them all back right there. Oh, it'll be very low. Ray! Taken down by Nile. Still Alter Ego winning it out. Two members down for Dewa. Oh. Nile chooses to recall and will come back. Diversion will bring some of the players to relocate. Even closer. Now they get ready for the second dance of the Lord. Nile is close. Let's see, with Nile right there. Oh, hi, he's actually popping his Mon Force. Good final slash over, and the chain CC with Nile's damage. They what cannot withstand Surizo. Now, trying oh, to go for the oh, steal. Oh, Owen gets caught in the Spirit of Destruction. Now, ow. And then the spit out Nino. Oh, going be caught. Has the Nino still? The resets all around Nino. Chain CC, Mueza. Good move with the I'm Offended. That was quite close, man. Alter Ego, they're kind of underestimating the damage potential right there. But for Dewa still, you saw what? Completely chunked down by the damage coming in from Roundel. Needs to be a bit careful in the positioning business, man. But looking at this lore taken by Alter Ego, they're finally gonna be able to have a lot more macro pressure. A lot of the pushes already happening. Now maybe losing one or two turrets. Dewa will have to try and scramble to try and damage control. Yeah, so far. Very well, United. It's not really a tough loss. They're still able to fight at least in a few departments. I mean, Ray is still scaling slowly, and what still yet to show his powers. The late game does come, but Ultra Ego, they're able to zone out players of Dewa United. Fake diversion to just bait out the players of Dewa United as they try to usher the Lord towards that bottom side turret. 
trying to crack the base wide open this time, but the Lord's still working on the tier 2 turret. Now Nile again, such a pest. Just trying to divert the attentions of the players of Dewa, United Ultra Eagle. They have full control of the map and the jungle as well. Down bottom, up top. You start from the jungle and the pressure makes it w makes its way down to the lanes as well. Now with the mid tower taken down though, finally the jungle of Dewa United is gonna be a bit more accessible as Owen looks for a chance to make a play happen. So Rizzo under the turret, it is very low though, it can be just taken right from under his nose. Flicker and Mofeta coming down, that's Sorizo with a chop down, but it is instantly purified out. Dewa get rid of Owen. We've already utilized oh. two flickers. Diversion play, where is it gonna go? Oh, someone's going behind, but they went even further behind. Dewa <laughs> tried to look for him, now they're like, what? Where? Where did they go? They can't fake the faker, and they did not get the diversion play. That was just they were just trading places. The double diversion. Is that a difference in level there? Actually, I guess I don't think so. It's just a selection of the different bushes. Rondo just made sure that his team was far enough from danger, just in case, right? Just in case something somehow shows up right behind them. Looking at the in-game equipment yet again. Rose Gold meets here for Nile, respecting the chance for Ray to kind of burst him down if Moeza is able to get some kind of pickoff. You can see from his own itemizations, Athena first to try and deal with the damage from the Harith from the Loyi as well. The Dreadnought armor is more of an afterthought since Nino and Nile, in theory, won't be targeting the Ruby. Mm -hmm. Owen oh, walking up, getting the ejector onto Ray. Has it enhanced sword? Oh. Sorizo! With a two man final slash, but now Moesa with I'm offended coming down. Nile in the back line, able to go for the flanks. Oh, dodging away from the top down. Nile is godlike, not just in stats, but also in the way he cabled around that skirmish. Elusive and chaotic. Add a bit of power and you get yourself now. Wow. Able to just bob and weave. Even trying to dodge that to us. Welcome in the chomp. The fanny is insane. It's just so good. So mechanical coming in from Nile. We saw the Nylon before. Now it's it's the what Nanny? <laughs> the Nanny. Nanny? Fanny Nile. It's just so good. He's so swift with it. And he knows exactly when to go in. We saw Roeza try to go for the counter engage. Uses the Don't Run Wolf King. Uses the I'm Offended. Once he saw those two tools were down, he only, he only waits for Watt. Sees where Watt is and goes straight for him. No Spear of Misery available for him either. Nile just immediately takes him down. Dewa has to adapt right here. They have le they're leaving nothing in the tank to deal with the Fanny once he shows up. And he is one of the main dangers in this game. Yeah. And so far, Nile's stellar performance here with the Fanny. 7 0 4, he is godlike. And uh, the players of Dewa United, you know, they just need to play reactively this time. They don't have, you know, that upper hand into trying to execute and just initiate to the players of Ultra Ego. Because again, so much peel coming in. And Nino has been on point with the Arlet as well. Now, Dewa United, will they be able to defend this Lord uh, cracking into oh, their base? No. Teresa already used. The Tekken was welcome earlier, didn't find anyone. Moeza only finding the ammo pendant onto Owen. It's Nile in the back, goes in. Teresa has the mortality. No! Oh my lord! What was that? He's playing with his food. Going in immediately, taking all, all three base stars. Owen! With the ejector into the final slash. Ray cannot move. Heinz will walk forward now. It is a mod force as well. Going for the reset. Dino doing the same thing as Watt can only just purify and going backwards. Now, Nile, look at him with the cables coming back at it. Watch, you gotta be careful, my guy. Mid wave in the mid lane, still there. Watch, be caught right there as the ancient turret connects onto Cerezo. Nile goes in again. He don't even need him. Nile oh. again with the cables, batted away from him. Get him out of here. Get the fanny out. It is unleashed. And when you have Nile, and we will all just turn into chaos. All hell breaks loose, Ultra Ego. Commit the chaos in game number one. They wanted to go for the fights, but they have fit enough more than they can absolutely chew. Ultra Ego taking the aggression, taking the fight to the gods, unwilling to suffer under the rule of the tyrannic gods, fighting back, showing that even as a mere mortal, Nile can rise to the occasion. Oh, look at the cables, he's so 